I think I wanted to be a musician for the, the same reason that most guys, I don't know if this applies to women so much, but to, to attract girls, of course. Uh, and this goes back to, uh, I mean, I'm going to show how old I am. This is back when I was like second or third grade. And the Beatles were huge, and all the girls were just, I love John, I love Paul, or whatever. And I said, I just, I wanted to feel like that about me. I loved music, too. My dad was a musician, and uh, so it was always around in the house. And, uh, but the girl thing was what tipped it over the edge, I'm sure. And I started really getting into it uh, more seriously as a youth. Um, and... I don't know, it was just one of those things that became sort of inevitable. Uh, I couldn't sort of find anything else that was going to quite uh, excite me the same way, although I was really into science, but uh, music won, and then I went to college and studied it. Speaking of getting girls by being a musician, I met my wife playing a show and just sort of engineered my walk to the bar to get a beer after the set so I'd go right by her table because I saw her out there and she was adorable. And uh, so, hey, it worked. I got the girl. It's really a series of little breaks all along the way that kind of doors that open, things that encourage you. Um, I mean, you know, as a kid, having a, a father that was a musician was kind of a break. Uh, my parents led me to go to music school. That was a break. Uh, before I got to LA, I lived in Tucson, Arizona, which was a very small town to, to make a living as, as a musician. But my break there was that I got to be the guy that was the keyboard player on the recording sessions that happened in Tucson. There wasn't any major ones, but it gave me studio experience and uh, in a low pressure environment. So that was a huge break. Then when I moved to L.A., um, I was working at Guitar Center on Sunset Boulevard selling synthesizers and uh, demonstrating them. And one day some guy came in and I was showing him, you know, this is how you make this sound on this instrument. This is how you make this sound on this instrument. He was trying to figure out which thing to buy. And so I was showing him how to make sounds on these things. And after a few minutes, he said, hey, what are you doing on Saturday? And uh, lo and behold, it was my first L.A. recording session. Um, for, I think it was Yellow Pages commercials or something. And then this guy ended up being a, a writer and producer with Stevie Nicks and Belinda Carlisle and people like that. And so that was a big break for me, just getting into that world. Um, the Nashville big break for me was knowing Dan Huff uh, from my LA session days. I've met him a few times, done a few sessions with him. Uh, and when I decided to move out to uh, Nashville, I called him up and I had seen him in years and I thought he wouldn't have any idea who I was but he was very very sweet and encouraging and said that he would hire me and he kind of knew a little bit about my skill set and and said that there was a lot of great keyboardists in town but nobody that sort of did exactly what I do uh, had exactly the same skill set so in true to his word he put me to work and and that that's the singular if I was going to single out one thing it's Dan Huff um, hiring me in Nashville. Formal education in music has been a huge help to me. Um, and I work with people every day that some have had music training, some have not, in varying degrees. Some people completely have none, wouldn't know how to read a piece of music on music paper if their life depended on it, and other guys that know that stuff very well. Um, and it sort of depends on, on what you do, I think, and uh, what you're good at and what you fall into. Like a lot of the guys are, are going to be just fine, never, never learning music. Uh, because after doing it for a while, you sort of intuitively pick up music theory concepts. Um, but for me, studying it, you know, was great because it sort of crystallized all this self-taught stuff. Oh, that's the name for that. Or that's how, that's how you describe this to somebody else. There's names for everything that I already kind of instinctively had taught myself over the years. But especially for me um, at music college, I went to the University of North Texas in Denton and I studied uh, music theory and classical piano and electronic music and all this and, and counterpoint and orchestration, all the stuff that 
has come in super handy for me because I do a lot of orchestra arranging and a lot of synth programming. And uh, the synthesizer stuff I learned on these old Moog modular systems, these huge wall of synths where you had to plug a patch cord from one thing to another to create a sound. And it was a great foundation for learning how uh, synthesizer sounds are created. Um, so all that stuff, counterpoint orchestration, uh, I, it was essential for me and I would not be um, where I am today if it had not been for that stuff. So I'm a big advocate for music education.